You know, after 18 months of not being able to travel to London, there's a lot of people that I have sorely missed, and probably few more than Daniel Wiegand. Of course, we all know Daniel is the 2019 world champion of shoemaking, an exceptionally talented shoemaker, incredibly precise, and probably doing some of the best work out there. Well, the last time that they were in the United States on his inaugural trunk show, back in February 2019, I had the opportunity for him to take my bespoke measurements and to commission a pair of shoes from him. Cat and the Dandy has been very generous to let us use their space. Uh, so join me as I head upstairs, meet with Daniel, and finally get fit for those black Capto Oxfords I commissioned over 18 months ago. It's so great to be back in London. And uh, it's been far too long since we've been able to enjoy one another's company. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a few Zoom happy hours uh, yeah, to help we had tide a, it over. Yeah, we had a little uh, li little uh, stream from the from the park. Yeah, that's right. We had a little uh, cocktail party yeah. in, the, in your lounge. Yeah, and we had a few little <laughs> private, uh, of course, uh, just Zoom sessions also of us just catching up. Yeah, solving all the world's solving problems. Solving the world's problems. Well, yeah. I mean, how's it been during COVID? I mean, I know that, of course, no one's been able to travel, which has really kind of disrupted the bespoke process. But I think you've been able, uh, as I remember you sharing, uh, get a few shoes out despite the challenges. Yeah. You know, we've I've I've had a lot more local British clients than I ever thought I would have, which has been a blessing. Yeah. And uh, and also I've been a lot of my clients in the U.S. that uh, that came to see me before the pandemic. They've yeah. been very patient, and mm -hmm. we've been trying to progress best we can with Zoom fittings and so on. You know, yeah. I prefer I'll, I'm gonna want to see everybody before we finish, finish anything. Shoes, yeah. But just try to make some kind of progress. And yeah, because you send some... me a fitting pair. Uh, via yeah, we've the done post. a fitting in the, uh, over, in the Zoom post or, to, yeah. over Zoom. And there's a lot of, you know, I can get getting it on your feet and allowing you to get give me some input. It'll, it'll allow me to change a few things. Yeah. But very, very difficult to do everything. Yeah. Some things you almost you want to touch and feel and, and really have a have a more a closer look yeah. at. But if anything is tight, anything is loose, you know, yeah. then I then I can deal with that. So we've definitely made some progress. Yeah. Well, you and Will Whiting in some ways got lucky mm -hmm. in that you did your trunk show through the United States. What was it? March 2019. Yeah, I think March. like uh, end of February. End of February. And literally, I think on the I think the 17th of March or something was the first day of lockdown here. So if, yeah, if that if I didn't do that trunk show, that would have been uh, yeah. quite a few problems. I can't imagine. Me. I mean, that, I guess the benefit of that is that you were able to take some deposits to help tide you through COVID. Yeah, probably not all the way through, yeah. but definitely hel helped a lot. Yeah. Um, and some people have even, you know, commissioned to to other pairs, other pairs. after that, yeah. uh, you know, and that that's it's great to have that trust yeah. and that people want to help out mm -hmm. any way they can. Yeah. So it's 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 worked out quite well considering yeah. the circumstances. We've got quite a loyal following, especially. I mean, I mean, people, your reputation precedes you. 2019 <laughs> World Championship of Shoemaking. It's a tall, uh, I guess, order to live up to, you know, mm. uh, in the actual making of the shoes, but. Uh, certainly a testament to all of the work you put into them. Yeah, it brings some clients in and it brings the performance anxiety along with it. <laughs> so, you know, we try to, uh, you know, keep people happy and yeah. uh, not disappoint anybody. Yeah. Well, of course, well, I couldn't be more thrilled to finally uh, be able to try these shoes on proper in your good company. And so, yeah, you um, know, I've been very curious to see what they're like in real life and uh, see if some of the changes we made following Zoom has yeah. been successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and a fitting shoe is never quite the same as the real thing. Yeah. But we want a we want a comfortable, clean looking shoe mm -hmm. that has a has a rough silhouette of what you have in mind. Yeah. So um, well, out of the right out of the bat, I mean, I see, mm. of course, the black cap to Oxfords. This mm. is, or this would be an Adelaide, right? Yeah. So I know you wanted an Adelaide. I think you first commissioned the black Oxford, mm -hmm. but then you you know you so, went, well, let's do something a little you different. You bend your rules a little yes. bit and went for a, for a nice uh, patina yeah. uh, Adelaide. Uh, but for the fitting here, I made it in your favorite color, black. Black, yes. So it's so, near and dear to my yeah, heart. Yeah, so ease into things. Yeah. yeah. And what's the second pair? So, that's... so I also brought a two-tie derby. It's an example of something I do from time to time uh, with people that I find have a, a fit that I find a little bit, I don't know, mysterious or something. <laughs> I, want, I want added info. Yeah. And this two-tie derby with a plain vamp. And the Derby style, it's really good at revealing issues. Okay. It doesn't fit the same. So for this style, I would probably adjust the last a bit. But just making this style of shoe 
on the on the Oxford same last, last. Yeah. It allows me to see a lot because sometimes with the cap toe and these design features, it can be a little bit forgiving. Yeah. But with the plain front, it's really a, a clean canvas. So okay. if there's any creasing issues and stuff, yeah. you, you see a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, it's a it, it helps me sometimes. Not a, sometimes I do it and it doesn't help much. Yeah. But it, it's a it's a it's a tool in the toolbox. Yeah, of course. Well, mm -hmm. and we've got the. Um, you know, we've got the video of the bespoke measurements uh, that Daniel took in Dallas back yeah. in February of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, on this channel, you can find the link to that video in the description below. And of course, one of the things I have to say that I've always been struck by uh, is just the detail and the precision with which you really kind of mm. have approached this craft. You know, there is the entire spectrum. It kind of runs the gamut to those that just kind of like, you know, wing it and kind of, you know, it's yeah. a little bit of trial and error. There's a lot of great shoemakers that don't take a lot of measurements. I happen to like it. Yeah. Sometimes I'll find out a few years into it that maybe some of those measurements are not as necessary, mm -hmm. but I always love having them around. And yeah. I, it, it's, it's for more for my, it's as much for my education as for the actual last making project yeah. I'm working on. Because mm -hmm. if I see that somebody had a fit issue and it reminds me of another client that mm -hmm. had a similar issue, I can go and check back the size and dimensions of that last and see mm. how that applies to maybe this customer. Yeah. And many times it, it really, really helped me solve the puzzle. And that detail mm. and that approach, again, mm. continues through the actual fitting itself. Um, yeah, so I make all the fitting shoes myself. The leather is the same as the real shoe would be made of, a box calf leather. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, the cork sole and the and the and the reinforcements are not quite the mm -hmm. same. I would say a fitting shoe is usually a little bit softer. Yeah. So it's probably more representative of what a more broken in shoe would feel like. Okay. So, you know, if it feels a little bit loose, I wouldn't probably make it that much tighter yeah. for the real thing at the fitting stage. Um, but some people, you know. They don't want a shoe that needs to be broken and they yeah. want it a little bit looser. So in those cases, if it's a bit loose, even a bit too loose at this mm -hmm. stage, it might just be the perfect fit for them. Yeah. But it allows us to get the right length, the right arch, the right yeah. you know, toe shape, rather than just my interpretation yeah. of their wish. And this is where kind of your intuition as a bespoke shoemaker and last maker really kind of comes in is, you know, this is just a tool to kind of yeah. help get you to that perfectly fitting first pair or at least as close yeah, as possible. Yeah. And even then, I think, you know, I've had this conversation with a lot of clients and a lot of people that watch this channel in terms of what is a realistic expectation for that first pair of shoes? Yeah. Should it be just bang on perfect and never need to be changed? Mm. Or is that first pair, you know, just the first step in what is a uh, kind of an evolution or journey? Yeah. And, you know, it, it is it is a learning process, both for maybe sometimes the client and for the maker. Mm -hmm. You know, what's perfect fitting for me might not be what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I've made myself shoes that are probably perfect fitting. But then a few months into it, they'd be like, oh, this could probably be a little bit roomier. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to wear them different times all day, different types of socks, different mm -hmm. times of the year. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's still, um, there's still some playroom there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, you don't know until you, you've you been wearing the shoes for, mm -hmm. for a while. But it's always something that, you know, if you get a pair of shoes, it doesn't feel the way you want it to feel. We'll adjust it, we'll remake it, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. because I, I don't really have any clients where I don't feel like I'm only going to make them one pair of shoes. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's we're, we're, we're going to be together for a long time, yeah. most of the time. Um, so getting that first pair right and doing a lot of work on the first pair to make it easier, the, the second pair, the third pair, the fourth pair, yeah. like it's, it's all worth it yeah. in the end. And that's the beauty of bespoke shoemaking is once you really kind of settle in and nail that last, mm -hmm. yeah. then at that point, you know, all of the trial work really stops or the fitting uh, process really stops. Mm -hmm. And you've got a little bit of evolution and maybe kind of over your second, third, fifth or eighth or 10th yeah. pair, maybe you add a bit here or take a bit out there, yeah. but that is small little tweaking yeah, that yeah. probably reflects just the evolution of your foot mm. more so than like, you know, the perfection of fit. Yeah, and you know, every style of shoe is slightly different, like a loaf or a boot, you make some changes, but the majority of the loss is the same. Yeah. The way that the toe box feels, mm -hmm. the, the way the heel grips, that once you got that right, you know, it's fine tuning. Yeah. So getting that right, 
you know, that's yeah, that's that's the most important. Well, part. that's exciting. So, which pair should we try on first? Let's try these on first. That's okay. that's the real uh, shoe, and then we do the the novelty educational pair after. Mm -hmm. That shoehorn. Thank you. Beautiful vintage shoehorn. What's the story? Yeah, there? with Rob Roy on it. Oh, okay. I like um, a novelty promotional shoehorn. <laughs> <laughs> and I always let the customer put on their shoes and lace them themselves because how people lace their shoes is very personal. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, probably want to try to restrict most of their circulation uh, and some people just gently tie it and that can make a big difference in yeah. how a loss should should should, yeah. uh, should be made well and also in socks i mean you know the quality of the sock is like one of the most important yeah no it, it makes a huge difference well they feel great i mean you can definitely hear that they're bespoke uh with the little rush of air out of the shoe as you put them on. Yeah, you're look, looking for that. You know, if you make them really tight, you can, you can kind of get that very easily. But to get that little puff of air and um, a comfortable fit, you're usually perfect or maybe a little bit snug. Mm -hmm. Nice a little Berluti knot. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'll kind of follow your lead here. Yeah, so the first thing we look at is that we want to have a clean looking shoe. Sitting down, the left one looks perfect. It's very clean looking. It feels maybe just a little bit loose, but I would would be tempted to kind of leave it where it is. Yeah. What do you think, you know, in through here with the facings, they kind of yeah, kiss? Yeah, with the facings, they, they close up a little bit too much. When you Now that they're laced up all the way up, do you feel like you would like it any tighter than that? Not across the facings. No. no. So that means that it's probably just about right. Yeah. But I will probably cut the pattern so that when I make the shoe, yeah. it's a little bit open. It could have a little just right here. Mm. I mean, here is perfect, yeah. right? Because I've got that high yeah, yeah. instep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would maybe take just a little bit off. If you stand up for me. So I always mark out the joint. And I can feel here, does the top, how does the top line feel? Do you feel like it's pinching you? You know, maybe a touch. A little bit tight I'm there. I'm... So yeah, it's a little bit tight here and a little bit loose And it's not so that outside. it's tight right here, but I just think mm. that it just maybe needs to be cut down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit high maybe. So we'll cut that down. Um, and that's more of a pattern. Yeah. Than any Anything so else. it's just a little bit loose here as well. So I think we're going to move some of the material of the loss to the inside. Okay. Um, but around here, there's literally no room and it's still very, very clean. So I'm just going to yeah. leave that just right where it is. Especially if it's going to snug up a little bit. Yeah. I think, you know, with a real sole, if it's, if I go tighter, we probably overshoot it. the mark. Yeah. And same here. We got a little bit of a tendency of a crease here, which I think you just need a little bit more, more height on the last right there. And the, your right foot has a tendency to lean outwards a little bit more. So we can see here that the little looseness we had here, we don't have here. So that one looks really quite good. And we can also see that this one's opening a little bit more. So perhaps the fit on the instep on the right last is just slightly better. A little bit snugger. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little room through the vamp, little mm -hmm. volume. Yeah. So you feel you have a little bit more room there on the right. Than the, the left, left, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that could be associated with that. The little crease here can mean you need a bit height there. So you're probably pulling this up a little bit. So we're just going to deal with that. Um, and I know you have a sensitive instep bone. Do you feel any, dis any discomfort? No. No. So in these shoes, I've added like a tiny, tiny padding to the tongue. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a sneaker tongue, yeah. but just something to... Because even if you get a loss that fits right, the abrasion of, of the laces and the tongue together, even at a great fitting loss, can mm -hmm. just be a little bit uncomfortable. 
and it just allows better circulation. And it also helps kind of adjust the shoe a little bit mm -hmm. as you wear it. Yeah. Uh, and as I'm standing, I mean, this mm -hmm. definitely needs to be trimmed down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm yeah, you have a little, that. you have quite a slim bony foot uh, and it's probably just hitting you a little bit too yeah. much right there. And then uh, I guess take a look at the heels. What mm -hmm. do you think of? So the left one looks a little bit loose. I think we could have a little bit of a pinch there. The right looks a bit snugger, is yeah. that true? The right feels fine. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, the left one's just a little bit snug. You can have a little walk. Yeah, as I walk, the left one definitely on the kind of the inside mm. of the foot needs to be trimmed down. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, the right one, the arch feels great. Mm -hmm. Arch feels really good. Arch supports uh, really good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I probably wouldn't change the heel on the right one at all. Mm. Right? I mean, especially if it's going to like It'll be a little bit firmer. A little bit. So we're going to cut yeah. these up and also see what we have uh, lurking inside. Ooh. Okay. Um, yeah, if you have a seat. Yep. So let's slide these up. It's always difficult to see this happen. Yeah. <laughs> How much time do you think you put into a trial pair of shoes? I would say realistically, one fitting shoe is probably a little bit over a day's work. Really? I try to do them like a few pairs at a time. Because you still have to last it and yeah, yeah. sew the uppers and... You know, you think it'd be a quick job, but they always take a little bit longer than you think. But it's definitely time well spent if it gives us more confidence in when we make the final pair. Yeah, and this certainly saves the mistakes of being way off that first pair. Yeah. And ensures that you land closer to the mark. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's very important for me to try to be as sure of the first pair as possible because I do all the shoes myself and I don't use any outworkers. My production capacity is, is fairly static. So I can't add more workers to get a pair of shoes made while I'm working on other pairs. So while I'm making a pair of shoes, I'm not doing anything else. So yeah, it's very absolutely. important that they're good. It's a beautiful knife. Where'd you get that? That's uh, from Tokyo. It's like a utility knife, I think, garden knife. But uh, maybe our Japanese viewers can fill me in. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the shoehorn there? I do, yes. So we'll give that a go. Might be tricky when it's... Yep. There we go. And then this feels like the convertible of shoes, mm. you know, open top. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of room now. Definitely. <laughs> We might not need quite that level of comfort. Right, so if you stand up for me, we can see here that you have a little bit of room here, which is kind of what we want. We want a little bit of room for the leather to move and that will help reduce creasing. So here we were a little bit tight. That's why we have the little crease there. So mm -hmm. we're gonna give you a little bit more room. And you're just gently gracing the sides here, which mm -hmm. gives me an idea that it's a good fit. And if you turn around, so here we're going to have a look. So yeah, like you said, there's just a little bit of room here between your foot and the shoe, which is causing some of the slipping. So we're going to reduce that a little bit, especially here on the inside. I feel like you could could need a little bit of a 
more grip. And maybe a little bit on the bottom on this as well, but not much. Okay, if you have a seat. And if we just take off the left, I'm gonna cut down the top line there and see if we can get it the right height for you. So address the area where you were feeling a bit of discomfort. So this is very similar to kind of the basted fitting where you actually see a tailor, you know, ripping the seams apart and retacking it together. Yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of crude looking, but it gives you a good idea of what you're going to do. And I think it also gives the client some confidence to knowing that, okay, it was tight there. We did something. It felt better. So I know that's what it'll be like the next time we try it on. So if you stand out now, you should probably feel a lot better. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's totally relief. So we'll, we'll apply that adjustment to the, to the final pattern. Mm-hmm. I think, I think we're Any other here. thoughts? So any other just kind no, of final I think, observations? Um, I think the height of the shoe is quite good. I think we're just going to reduce a little bit across the, the waist here behind the joint. It will allow us to put a little bit more shape into it. Mm -hmm. uh, length is good. We have quite a nice slim foot, so we don't have to go too long to make uh, an elegant toe shape. Uh, sometimes you'd have to go a little bit longer than this to get a, a certain kind of look, mm -hmm. but in yours, your case, it's not necessary. Yeah. So I'm just going to give you a little bit more room here, and you can take a, take a little bit of room out on this one. Mm -hmm. So we get them nicely paired up, along yeah. with a slightly tighter heel cup on the left. Beautiful. So where do you think you take the next pair? Do you think you take them straight to finish, or you do another fitting? I would do one fitting. Most likely, I'll probably... Depending on the time frame, if I go to the US, I might see you in person. Mm -hmm. But with these minor adjustments, I'd probably be quite comfortable to send you a fitting just yeah. to see that these t smaller issues have been addressed mm -hmm. and, and, and then go straight to finish. Yeah. Just so we know that making these adjustments hasn't caused any other issues or that the adjustments have been Achieve. not underdone or yeah. overdone. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that is just right. Yeah. But having seen it on your feet, I know where everything is yeah. and I'm more familiar with the project. Okay. So, that was pretty good. All right, hard work. So, and this is a, a shoe style that I really like for fittings mm -hmm. because it's very simple and it's got the Derby style. And the Derby style is very good at revealing if the volume is distributed correctly on the last for the foot that's going inside. We put those on. So because the balance was very good on the right foot, I'm curious to see the fit of the left one because that one was a little bit tight on the inside. Mm -hmm. And because they're the same pattern, I'm assuming they will probably feel a similar tightness here, maybe a little bit less. Well, it's less tight on this one, mm -hmm. it feels like. Yeah, because the two tight derby, they don't sit quite as high on the mm -hmm. foot as an Oxford. So I feel like uh, they're a little bit more forgiving. And with the plain vamp, if it's too tight somewhere, you get a lot of creasing issues and so mm -hmm. on. So we see the, I mean, so the left one really sits flat and mm -hmm. then the right one, you can kind of see some of the creasing. Right? Yeah, and it's exactly like we saw on the other shoe. So that's probably from your joint here, needs a little bit more room to mm -hmm. reduce that crease. Or it could be here where you need well, a little bit Well, I don't feel any pressure right on the one. No. Is sometimes it, the measurements are right, but the, the shape is off. A yeah, okay. Bit. And that, because if the shape is the same, if the last shape is correct, it won't distort the leather when you put your foot in. Mm -hmm. But if the last and the foot is different and you put your foot in, something changes. Okay. That can cause a crease or, mm -hmm. or something like that. So here we know we're about right. And here we just know we need a little bit adjustment on these areas. And that's something I will take a look at, compare the loss with your measurements and your fitting to figure out what yeah. to do. So you'll reference back to the original measurements mm. like in conjunction with the data you took from the fitting shoe in order to determine your exactly. adjustments? I never just do the fitting based, never do the adjustment just based on the fitting. Mm -hmm. I always check the measures to see, because sometimes you can get a very similar issue by something being too loose or too tight almost. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, um, and on this one, we can see that your facings are parallel. And on this one, I see a slight twist. Okay. Yeah. And he wants to do that a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and that and that's what's caused this feeling tight here and loose there. Okay. So when we reduce that and increase that, we'll get a parallel shape again. Yeah. And that's something that doesn't get revealed on mm -hmm. the Oxford shoe. So that's like a distribution thing where you just kind of maybe yeah. shift that over. Yeah. So if I take undo these and I just push these, you can kind of see that they want to go a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. It's not much, but just a little bit, because that's the line I draw before. So you okay. can see it's it's shifted a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, it's very clean looking. So yeah. when it when it looks like this, I basically have to go by the the client's comments and say, yeah. I, is it too, is it comfortable? Yeah. Is it too loose? It is too yeah. tight? Because visually, and by feeling at it, I can literally see no problems here. Yeah. Okay. So. I would be very tempted to go go to go to finish the shoe. Let's slip that off. And I'm not gonna cut these apart because I'm not making this shoe. <laughs> that might if I correct according to this fitting, I might ruin the fit for that shoe. Really? Okay. And you said that you know you would adjust the last. Mm -hmm. um, how would you adjust the last for a, a two eye derby if you were to for the, the two tie derby? Sometimes um, for a two tie, it's probably not that different. For a normal derby, you'd probably, I'd, I'd be tempted to go with a roomier waist measurement. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times I think the adjustments would be because I would get more information about if the volume distribution of the instep is correct. Mm -hmm. And I would have to adjust that for it to fit you well. With an, if I only did an Oxford, I probably wouldn't notice. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't feel it either. <laughs> but if I make that shoe fits well, mm -hmm. and then the customer orders this, it might be an issue. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather have that taken care of. Yeah. And it, it, it just makes your life easier yeah. going forward. So it's no, so then you're able to reflect those changes in the last before you get too far down the road. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just sets you, sets that off in a in a better direction, yeah. and uh, it might not be a problem for this style, but it could it could potentially be in a, a problem with an order in the future. Yeah, and it's nice to have that taken yeah. care of straight away. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Anything else? No, I'm uh, quite excited, and uh, you know maybe getting 18 months to do a first fitting uh, paid off. <laughs> it looks quite good. Well, thank you for trekking down to London, and uh, of course I know we've got dinner tonight, so yeah. look forward to catching up in greater detail. But uh, exactly. otherwise, I'll see you next in Dallas. Yeah, thank see you. you.